Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm finally doing a uh, tutorial showing you the audio repair tools that I use. This one's been very highly requested and not only do I have loads of good examples of repairing completely broken audio that you'd think is uh, unrepairable, but I'm also going to be giving away a couple of copies of the software that I'm using in this video. There are lots of different softwares and plugins for repairing audio, but the one I've been using for the last couple of years is called RX7 by Isotope. This video is in no way sponsored by Isotope, just want to say that. RX8 was released earlier this week, so I thought what better time to actually do a tutorial and show you how I use it and what's possible. The first example, I'm going to be cleaning up a load of guitar amplifier noise. The second example, I'm going to be fixing a load of wind noise that was ruining some audio recorded outside. In the third example, I'm going to be reducing the reverb in a recording, as well as reducing uh, noise from a microphone being struck in the recording. And in the fourth example, I'm going to be removing a load of mouth noises and lip smacks, along with a couple of really annoying little whistles. It can be run as a standalone piece of software, which is how I use it, or you can run the various modules and repair units inside your DAW. I like running it standalone because I like dragging in messed up audio, fixing it, then I export it and then I pull it back into my video or audio editor. That's just the way I like to use it. So I've got the standalone version open here. When you've got audio to work with, you simply drag and drop it onto the interface and it fills up here. Whether it's a stereo file, you see left and right here. Or if it's a mono file, you just see one signal. This can also work with polywave files, which is great as well. At the bottom, you've got your transport controls to stop, start and play. You've got your selection tools and zoom tools down here. And then most importantly, at the side, you have all of these repair modules. So you have modules for reducing breaths, reducing clipping, crackle, DS, removing wind, removing uh, noise from behind your voice, as well as a load of utility stuff like EQ, gain, polarity. And the main reason why I keep coming back to RX instead of other noise reduction tools is because this seems to have everything I need within all of these modules. And you don't really need a tutorial to learn how to use it. You sort of just load up a module, get hands on and see what it sounds like. And that's really how I like my plugins. I like when they're intuitive. At the bottom, you can choose between a waveform view or a spectrogram view, which is very important in this tutorial. Waveform, we're all familiar with. You can zoom in and see it sort of sample by sample. But the spectrogram view... What's really important to understand is that the bottom of the screen here represents low frequencies and the top of the screen here is your high frequencies, you know, 15 to 20 thousand hertz. So let's start with that guitar recording. You'll hear the guitar amp noise just uh, is real, really loud and it permeates through the recording. And especially at the start and end, it's really difficult to separate it out. Let's look at the repair modules we have here. There is one specific to guitar denoising, which is new. So you can see that you can remove amp, squeak, pick. But the one I'm actually most familiar with that I use all the time is just the spectral denoise. And before I dive into all of the controls, each of the modules has a set of presets. So there's probably something in there that you're trying to achieve. This can be a great starting point, but I'd always recommend just adjusting uh, the settings and fine tuning it uh, whilst listening to the results yourself. You select a portion that only has the guitar noise in it. So I select a portion and I hit learn and it learns that sound profile. Then I'm going to select the entire recording, control A. And now there's loads of options here. So quality, do you want it to be fast and kind of not so great quality or slower processing, but the best quality? Going over to the right, we have how much reduction do I want? So do I want a little bit of reduction or do I want tons and tons of reduction? So what I'm going to do is hit preview and I'll experiment with the reduction amount just so that the guitar still sounds natural. So what was interesting was that even as I pushed it very far, the guitar did sa start sounding a little bit subdued, but I can definitely push this a little bit further than I'd expect. So I'm going to go to about 13 or 14, and I'm just going to render that. So as you can see, it takes just one or two seconds to uh, render it out. And now that processing is sort of baked into it, so it's no longer running through the CPU, which is why I like using this standalone. 
and let's take a listen. And at the end, that's excellent. If I go back to the initial state, and at the start again, so after denoising, before, absolute night and day difference. So that's quite a simple example. Let's go on to the second one. So just picture this, you've recorded something outside, maybe an interview you've recorded with your phone or a lavalier mic. What's being said is great, but it's just being absolutely distorted by the wind. Let's take a listen. Let's use the de-wind tool to reduce some of the gusts of wind in this recording. You can hear what I'm saying, but the wind noises are extremely distracting, so I just want to reduce them just a little bit. So again, I'm going to go to the repair tools here. I just select the one that makes the most sense, de-wind. Again, you don't really need a tutorial for this. You just look at it and you go. And then you decide how much reduction you want to have. And the way you set these is that you hit preview and you simply take a listen as you're adjusting them until it sounds right to you. So if I hit preview, let's use the de-wind tool to reduce some of the gusts of wind in this recording. Now that actually sounds okay to me. I don't really want to push it any further than that. So if I render that, now I've clearly lost some volume, so I'm going to go down to the tools and add a little bit of gain back in. And then I'm also going to pull open an EQ because I lost a little bit of the low end and I'm just going to add a, a tiny little bit of low end back in. Let's take a listen. Let's use the de-wind tool to reduce some of the gusts of wind in this recording and just generally make it sound a little bit cleaner. And before? Let's use the de-wind tool to reduce some of the gusts of wind in this recording. The processed one did sound a little bit artificial, but in this case, it's a really bad example and we're just trying to fix it. And you might think that if you recorded an interview like that and tried to upload that to YouTube, it would be completely ruined by all those wind gusts. No one would want to keep listening, but actually you can fix it and make it sound just about bearable. Uh, without having to do anything too crazy. It's just a couple of clicks away. I think now's a good time to talk about the giveaway. So what happened was I was preparing this tutorial for RX-7, which has been requested for like a year or two, it seems. And as I was putting it together, I reached out to Isotope and said, hey, I was doing this uh, tutorial about noise reduction and fixing audio, and I'm basically just using RX-7. Do you mind giving a couple of uh, copies away to my community? And they said, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. You know, um, no strings attached no mailing list, no nonsense like that, just here's a couple of copies, give them away to your community, which I think is great because it means this video isn't sponsored by Isotope, you know, I'm telling you, you don't have to use this, you can use anything you want, but they very kindly gave a copy of Elements, Standard and Advanced, so the three different tiers of this product uh, away, so three of you uh, will win one of those, so if you like, you can use the link in the description to sign up for that giveaway. There's no mailing list or any nonsense like that, I promise. I'm just trying to get it, uh, these products into the hands of people that need them. So uh, good luck with that, and let's get back to the video. This next example is a little bit more fun because we get to use the Spectrum tool and start selecting some frequencies. Let's take a listen to it. I'm going to be reducing the reverb and also these microphone bumps here. Let's see what we can do to reduce the reverb in this recording. And on top of that, I'm going to just tap the microphone stand to simulate some handling noise. So picture maybe you're uh, recording a video for YouTube or maybe like a low budget film or something. You've got a boom microphone set up in the room, but there's just way too much noise. The mic operator just is fumbling around and they've, they've wrecked the take. I'm going to just tap the microphone stand with this here. My process with RX or really anything mixing and mastering is to deal with the biggest problems first. And in this case, these microphone bumps here. I'm going to just tap the microphone stand are clearly the biggest problem. And we're lucky it didn't clip. Uh, but if it did clip, we could quickly use the D clipper tool up here. If I go to the spectrogram view and I just use some of the zoom tools, you can see that there's a very big buildup of uh, low and mid just here where this microphone is bumped. I'm going to just tap the microphone stand. And what I'm going to use is the lasso tool. So if you've ever used like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, you'll be familiar with this. I'm literally just going to uh, drag around this bump. And then I'm going to right click. And you also have access to all of the tools here. And I'm just going to render silence into it, which is quite a crude way to fix this. But what you'll see now, or more importantly here, is that those uh, microphone bumps are vastly reduced. I'm going to just tap the microphone stand 
to simulate some handling noise. And now it's gone from a sort of take ruining problem to something that you could probably tune up a little bit with EQ and compression and it's just going to be a very minor disturbance for those people that are really listening in closely on headphones. If I go before and after, I'm going to just tap the microphone stand. I'm going to just tap the microphone stand. Huge difference. The next thing I'd like to address is the general level of noise and also reverb or echo uh, in this recording. Let's take a quick listen. Let's see what we can do to reduce the reverb in this recording. And on top of that, you'll especially hear this well if you're wearing headphones. Now they do have a specific dialogue D reverb module, but I find that this one doesn't uh, work quite as effectively as just the plain old dialogue isolate module that they have. So we'll try, we'll probably try both, but I'll start with the dialogue isolate and I'm going to do a quick preview just of this section here. Let's see what we can do to reduce the reverb in this recording. And on top of that, I love that, just the way it was. You can also try to uh, preserve some of the ambience if it feels a little bit unnatural, so I'll preserve a little bit of it there, and then I'm quickly going to select the entire uh, take there and render the whole thing. Let's hear with and without the processing. Let's see what we can do to reduce the reverb in this recording, and on top of that, let's see what we can do to reduce the reverb in this recording, and on top of that, I just think already that is a huge improvement and I don't mind there being a subtle amount of reverb. Maybe the problem was all of just that noise and mess underneath the audio, um, sort of masking the intelligibility of the words. And I think now there'd, there'd be no problem blending this into uh, a production and everyone would know what's going on. There's nothing really too distracting there. So I'm going to leave it at that. One of the hardest skills to learn using these sorts of tools is to know when to stop processing. I used to overprocess the audio. One thing that helps me with this is process it a little bit and then drag it back into your audio or video editor. When you see it in the context of everything else, you'll probably realize that you don't need to process it anymore. Often I can obsess about trying to get the audio perfect, but then when you actually see it in the context of a production, it didn't need that level of perfection. This example definitely requires you to wear headphones or be in a very good listening environment. And I'd like you to try and listen in for mouth noises, little sort of clicks and pops coming out of the out of the voice. It's quite uncomfortable to listen to, so there's a bit of a warning if anyone has like misophonia or anything like that. I'll go around the same uh, phrase a few times. It's a convincing theory. It's a convincing theory. It's a convincing theory. RX-8 has a fantastic module for this called Mouth D-Click, which I use all the time. The good thing about this module is you can output the clicks only. So if I hit preview, we'll hear just those mouth clicks. So it really doesn't sound that good. We can pick one of the presets, you know, eliminate clicks, reduce smack, something like that. But I find just even on its standard settings, it's pretty good. So I'm going to render that out. With it removed, the audio becomes a lot more pleasant. It's a convincing theory. It's a convincing theory. Without, it's a convincing theory. And that can be the difference between someone being able to tolerate you speaking for half an hour or clicking away in the first 30 seconds. There's loads of things I could do to clean up this audio, including EQ uh, and DSing. However, there's a very particular problem. When I say rose granite, there's a whistle probably just created by my teeth or my mouth, and it's really distracting and off-putting. Cannot cut rose granite. One more time. Cannot cut rose granite. It's right here. It's so frustrating, and you can see there's a build-up here on the audio, but if I go to the spectrum view, it becomes immediately apparent where the problem is. So all the way along, there's nothing, and then just here, there's this super bright whistle at around 2.5 to 3K. I'm going to choose this uh, time frequency selection tool down here so I can draw a box around it. Now I could select this entire region, but I want to really just hone in on, on the biggest problem area here. And then I go to spectral repair. There's a few different tools within here to attenuate the problem or replace it. But uh, what I want to do is attenuate, which means reduce, and I want to reduce it not just by reducing the gain, but I want to use the areas around it to sort of fill in some of that sound as well, because I don't want to just have a, a dropout of volume at 3K for that moment. And I can choose to fill it in using stuff from either side, up and down, or a bit of both. So I'm just going to leave everything where it is now and just hit render, and you can see that it's been greatly reduced. I suppose there'll still probably be a slight whistle, but I think it's going to be very, very subdued. Let's take a listen. Cut rose granite.
cut rose granite. Now it's so far in the background before. Rose granite. Rose granite. After. Rose granite. So it's taken it from something that is piercing your ears and is really loud to something that's all the way in the background and that you could tolerate and listen to. Whether it is a, you know, an unwanted string ringing out on a cello or a guitar, you can simply dive in and reduce just those frequencies for a certain portion of time. It's very similar to, say, automating an EQ just for a half a second, but you don't have to do any automation. You don't have to have any automation clips and worry about latency and all that stuff in your DAW. You can just fix the problem and then drag it back into your video or audio editor. So that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it maybe inspires you to go uh, research different audio uh, repair tools. Like I said, this isn't the only audio repair tool out there. It's just one that I really like and that I've had great results from for many years. Don't forget to enter the giveaway, and I hope you have a great week, and that I see you in next week's video. Bye for now.